friends, you're listening and watching Rashkin Report, and I'm your host, Yuri Rashkin. I am excited to welcome to the program Ksenia Kirillova. Ksenia, uh, well, first of all, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Ksenia you is uh, absolutely. Ksenia is an independent journalist, originally from Sverdlovsk, who's uh, Russia, who has been living in the United States since 2014. And Ksenia has written extensively, as her bio says, hundreds of articles. I do not doubt it for a second. Uh, she's quite prolific. And um, she wrote a very interesting article um, regarding the ideology um, that Russia currently is looking to export. And this is something that um, we're going to be discussing on the program today. Uh, Ksenia, I'm looking at this article, and it's quite thorough as all your work is. And um, you, you draw a lot of very important distinctions why um, what Russia is selling actually isn't really palatable or welcomed by those that it is selling it to, if they really think about it. But can you talk about what is Russia's vision of how they can use propaganda and ideology uh, to promote um, their agenda? And what is that agenda, you know? Yes, because uh, it's even uh, some difference between uh, propaganda and, uh, I would say, informational operation. Because what Russia really does now against the West, we can call it uh, not only uh, propaganda in its classic meaning of uh, this word, but uh, some kind of informational operation. And uh, we should make some distinctions between um, Russian disinformation in, in the form of, uh, we can say, informational noise, so it means uh, different versions of reality, it's a lie, it's a slander, it's something that aimed to destroy critical thinking at all. It's uh, one part. And the second part, you uh, were absolutely right, it's uh, some specific ideologies for export. And what is different uh, of current Russian propaganda, which uh, contains ideologies for export, with uh, the Soviet one, for example, that uh, Soviet propaganda um, targeted specific group in the West, people of left views, of communist views, some uh, Soviet supporters, but. Mm, Current Russian propaganda uh, tries to uh, create alternative realities for different social groups. And yes, I call them ideologies for export because they were created especially for specific uh, social groups on the West. It is an interesting point because if mm -hmm. uh, if one is to examine Russia, then there is very little ideology that is actually present in Russia itself. So if there is an ideology, it pretty much has to be for an export as an export product because uh, Russians really don't have that communism that they used to. Um, you know, there is no ideology in Russia except for maybe money and fear. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Uh, you are absolutely correct. Uh, for example, many uh, Western journalists and uh, political analysts mentioned Alexander Dugin, uh, a creator of some Eurasianist ideology, and uh, many people uh, mistakenly uh, declared that uh, uh, this is a new Russian ideology, like orthodox, traditional values, and some uh, kind of white uh, supremacism in Russian style, imperial Eurasian style. But uh, you yourself visited Russia, and I think you can confirm that uh, ordinary Russians almost don't know who Dugin is, and they definitely don't believe in any kind of ideologies, and even um, don't know uh, his system. So uh, this ideology was created. Uh, especially for radical rights on the West, including in the United States, and many American investigative journalists um, have already described connections between American radical rights, including Duke and other uh, radical rights leaders with Dugin. Uh, but but Russia, it Russia itself actually does not... Um, follow the, the what right in the West believes. It's actually very much opposite of that. Um, yes. Uh, 
what I uh, just <laughs> wanted to say uh, that these ideologies contradict uh, not only uh, realities in Russia, it's contradict uh, sometimes each other. For example, yes, for radical right, they created this kind of ideology. For people more educated in uh, religious, they created uh, more Christian version of uh, this ideology. Um, and uh, but. Uh, when they support left, radical left, especially in Europe, of course they try to create Russia as a kind of post-Soviet uh, country, which still has some element of old Soviet system. And uh, it's very curious to watch how Russia works with Russian diaspora abroad, including here in the United States. You know that uh, even Russian supporters here are very divided. For example, some people have strong nostalgia of the Soviet Union. They came to the United States mostly just because of collapse of the Soviet Union. It was the only uh, the only reason for immigration. And another uh, part of uh, Russian community here, it's um, uh, descendants of uh, the old white guard, uh, descendants of people who escaped from Bolsheviks during the Russian Civil War. And uh, these people have opposite, uh, absolutely the opposite views regarding the uh, Soviet past. Some of them admire the Soviet past and some uh, they really reject everything which connected to the Soviet past. But both groups, they approved current Russian aggressive policy. And, for example, working with and uh, both these groups, they hate um, modern liberal and uh, Democrats and they uh, support Russian aggressive policy in Ukraine and they support current Russia. So, um, uh, for communist, uh, for people with communist views, uh, Russia declares that uh, the Russia is a, um, a direct um, descendant, a I think, of uh, hair of uh, successor of the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. and um, um, for and that uh, liberal views were created by the enemies of the Soviet Union, by uh, damned imperialist and liberal West, but um, for descendants of the White God, for example, they declare that a liberal world order is a direct consequences of um, communism. So, up a, Absolutely the opposite. Uh, about Ukraine, it's also funny. For example, for communists, uh, they say that, of course, uh, current Ukraine is an enemy because it tries to destroy all uh, el uh, Soviet element and tries to break all the connection with the Soviet past. But um, for white God, people for monarchist, they say that in opposite, Ukrainian independence is a direct consequences of Soviet past, and even Ukrainian language is direct consequences of what communists did. did. So uh, we see that it's absolutely the opposite. Uh, the same thing with uh, American radical rights. For example, probably you heard about Liga of South organization. Uh, last year they created a Russian page on the website they uh, with the title to our Russian friends and um, uh, they um, called Russians to cooperate and they uh, declared that they had, uh, had similar values and uh, common roots and common Christian civilization. By the way, it was um, um, relatively well written, almost without mistakes in Russians. Probably they have a, a native uh, language, uh, uh, <laughs> 
a native speaker uh, who helped them to translate it. Anyway, uh, if you uh, learn the ideology, uh, you can discover that it's absolutely opposite to current realities in Russia. Uh, for example, these people even consider an American government as a repressive one, and they uh, call for more freedom, more independence to local authorities. Um, they call for and this is this is American right we're speaking about. That this is what they want. They want more local control. They want more freedoms. They feel oppressed. Go ahead. And of course, and of course, they want uh, uh, freedom of uh, gun, uh, gun guns uh, were in yet. And uh, of course, it's impossible in Russia because the Russian government is afraid even of uh, peaceful uh, school children who attend some uh, non-violent peaceful protest action. They will never allow um, uh, they will never allow uh, people to carry guns freely. And by the way, uh, League of the South calls for independent of uh, um, southern states, uh, actually for separatism. But you know that um, uh, Russian authorities already uh, started criminal cases and accused many people in uh, separatism. So uh, in um, if uh, they, uh, these people from League of the South lived in Russia, they would face with criminal charges during the, the first day in Russia. <laughs> because in Russia, all what they do, all the views, uh, it's illegal. It's uh, the reason of uh, criminal prosecution. Sure. So, Ksenia, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. um, listening to this, yes, you. I think, first of all, I want to thank you for doing this interview in English because this is not your first language and, and neither <laughs> mine. But the information that you have is extremely important, especially for English speakers, because Russian language speakers have a pretty good understanding of what's going on with Russian ideology and propaganda because we've experienced it's important to, I think, share this story. Now, when we look at uh, the, the radical right... Um, they, I think, you know, I, I would uh, allow for possibility that they understand that Russia is really not the things that they are fighting for. Um, but uh, as we see with Radical Right, they have made a, already a pretty big bargain with uh, Donald Trump because Donald Trump yeah. doesn't follow a lot of the things that they want, but he supports the ideas that they like. And it's this exchange of fine, you may not be what we're looking for, but at least you're providing support, uh, is, is a really important, uh, I think, feature. And um, it almost, in kind of a perverted way, reminds me of how Jews, for hundreds of years, were hoping to have a homeland, a home, there's a state of our own, and then, you know, there's a state of Israel that Jews are always welcomed in, and it's a kind of a wonderful thing to know that there's this homeland that people can go to. And it seems like Russia became this homeland state headquarters for all sorts of crazy, um, radicalized folks all over the world. So, you, you know, know, it serves a purpose because it basically provides an alternative to whatever else the mainstream is. So if you have America providing, you know, being the, the main uh, country, you know, you know, the superpower, then you just need to have something that's opposite and so russia really doesn't have to do anything other than to say <laughs> if you're against america if you have a problem with what's going on in the united states you're welcome here um do you know do you see a point in that or, or how do you look at it yes yes uh you're absolutely right uh the point is that the main goal of russia is to destabilize the west and of course uh in order to fulfill this uh, task russia supports all radical elements around the world and uh, inside the united states so of course they support not only radical uh, rights, but even they use radical left. The only difference is that um, Russian ties with American radical rights uh, is um, it's direct ties, but uh, Russia doesn't have uh, a ready ideology for export for American radical left, but they uh, definitely use 
them just to scare. I, th- I think they are uh, trying because Russia does have some pretty strong, at least on the surface, on the face of it, a very strong uh, social safety net. There is supposedly free health care. There's, you know, there's lots of services that government supposedly provides, even though it seems like as time goes on, those services get worse and worse to the point that people are literally leaving the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there, there is something, you know, following your logic that they are able, it seems like, to present to the West for, for the radical left folks. Yes, uh, the only difference in the United States, because uh, in Europe, Russia has direct connections with radical lefts in Europe, but here in the United States, uh, Russia prefers uh, to approach radical left under the false flag, because they don't support Donald Trump and they don't support Russia, uh, because of all this uh, um, story about the possible connections. So, uh, uh, but anyway, of course, Russia tries to support the views and at the same time uh, to uh, to use them to scare um, radical rights. So to represent uh, radical left views as a picture of the opponents. So look, uh, you should support Trump, you should support Russia, otherwise these people will win. And it's also uh, some kind of alternative reality because on the democratic uh, part of political spectrum, people with very different views, uh, with moderate views, and actually a radical um, left, they have some anarchist views, so they don't have political representatives because they mostly consider every kind of government, every kind of state as evil. And they were against uh, the government even under Barack Obama's rule. So uh, it's uh, just uh, not not true uh, to say that uh, conservative opponents in American policy are radical lefts. Radical lefts, it's a different phenomenon. But yes, they try to use it to present, to scare people, uh, to increase the fear and phobias. And now we uh, moved to a point of a structure of creation of these ideologies for experts, because yes, they were very different. Sometimes they contradict each other and contradict realities inside Russia, but they have some single principle and algorithm of construction. First of all, and yes, the goal is to support all radical views to increase people's fears, phobias. They appeal to emotions, not uh, to some strong worldwide, uh, just to destabilize the way. So yes, Moscow is really a high uh, headquarters for all radical elements, which, because yes, at least they want uh, to look like the alternative everything what people hate. So, uh, yeah, so that should be some um, um, structure of ideologies for experts. First of all, its main point that uh, in creating any illusion, illusory reality, uh, it's it shouldn't be logical or refutable, but it should be very pleasant for for specific targeting group. So, uh, I mean, I think we're kind of familiar with this concept in a way because this is what Facebook ads were all about. The whole idea is that you just set up a message that fits each particular person and reality, well, who really cares? Yes, that people already want to believe. And uh, the second point, uh, these ideologies for experts create in detail an image and enemy. And this enemy is in the category that specific target group is already hostile to. And what uh, gives them the greatest phobias um, and um, for example, for um, some religious people, it could be liberal anarchist. For nationalists, it could be some uh, Jewish conspiracy. Uh, for um, 
anarchist, a left anarchist, which could be staged at all government, at all. They believe in some conspiracy theories uh, involving special services. So uh, some people are fear of immigrants. We know how uh, Russian propaganda used this fear during the interference in the United States elections. Um, so, so, so I uh, guess it's, it's important just to keep in mind that uh, this is ideology, this is spin, reality and this product have nothing to do um, other, you know, that there's just no connection. Um, and on that note, I'll remind listeners that you're listening and watching Rashkin Report. I'm your host, Yuri Rashkin. Remember to sign up and to like the channel on YouTube, on Facebook. And uh, if you're listening to podcasts, uh, subscribe to Rashkin Report as a podcast. We're available at iTunes and anywhere else you are downloading and listening to podcasts. My guest today is Ksenia Kirilova, an independent journalist uh, who lives in the United States since 2014, uh, but she's originally, as you could probably tell from her slight accent, is from Russia. <laughs> and uh, Ksenia, I think it's fantastic. Thank you so much for uh, being on the program. Mm -hmm. Next question that I'd like to, an area yeah, that I would like to... I apologize for my English and accent, so I live in the United States only for five years. It keeps so, getting, your English keeps getting better and better, and, and all of us are better for it. Thank you. Um, here's what the next area that I wanted to discuss. And we started kind of, we touched on this, but then we moved away, but I think it's a very important point, And this is what I'm talking about. Um, Russians have been experiencing this approach of media trying to kind of blur the lines of what's true and what's not true for a long time. Um, and this is part of what Russian ideology, well, not necessarily ideology, that's not about ideology, it's about approach to news. This is what we've been becoming saturated with, maybe because of Facebook, maybe because there is a, a, a party outside that is intent on delivering this product to us. Um, the result is people become very conspiracy minded because rather than think that, um, you know, and I had a very interesting conversation. I always enjoy speaking with him, Yuri Filstinsky, who is a, um, another, you know, he's a historian, he's a uh, writer. And uh, because he's a professional historian, um, I never hear him say, well, we'll never find out, which is what to me is what a conspiracy, conspiracy thinking is all about. There is no truth. We're never going to find out what really happened. He says, well, we're going to find out later. To me, that's, that's a historian's approach. Yeah, because over time, information and facts and documents are going to emerge. On the, on the other hand, if we just presume that there is never going to be any truth out there, and uh, then we can believe anything we want. And Russians have been experiencing this for quite some time. And uh, when I went back to Russia in June of this year, I was shocked by how many people believe in, in conspiracies when it comes to pretty major events. Um, several people want to talk to me about the Twin Towers and, and the conspiracies that they were aware of there. And, uh, that's, you know, and I was told that I should have asked people about... Um, whether Americans really landed on the moon, you know, so a lot of, and that's just mainstream Russians there, you know, um, it's, it's, uh, it was astounding to me, but it is really becoming more and more prevalent type of thinking in the West and the United States. Um, you know, what, what do you think about that? You know, uh, Yuri, uh, it's some difficult point you mentioned because again, uh, we should, uh, distinguish, uh, Russian and Western conspiracy theories, because don't forget, please, that Russia is a totalitarian state fully controlled by special services. It's not conspiracy theory, it's true. If you read Mueller's report about Russian interference in the United States election, you know that uh, we see not some fantastic conspiracy theories, uh, we see a real conspiracy. Uh, how they created fake accounts, how they spread uh, false information using these uh, fake accounts pretending to be Americans and uh, um, 
as I really tried to influence uh, public opinion in the United States, it's only one example. If uh, we uh, read uh, on materials of investigation of connections between Trump team and Russians, we always can see some close to the Kremlin lawyer, close businessmen, some oligarchs close to Kremlin, and some even professor. You remember uh, that also uh, offered uh, some connections to Kremlin and even uh, uh, Maria Putin, who was definitely uh, an ordinary person, I mean not a professional intelligence officer, but who had connections with Kremlin, with, Rus with Russian special services, and also tried to develop some informal back channels uh, with presidential administration. So, we can see that in Russia, really, ordinary people, even uh, just uh, simple um, citizens, uh, businessmen and propagandists, they really have some uh, frequently have connections with the government, with special services, and Russians uh, used to live in this reality. So uh, that uh, some conspiracy theories uh, are really true because. For example, I lived in dissident environment in Russia, and we were really infiltrated by FSB agents, people who worked for the FSB as double agents, and um, uh, you know many such cases uh, created by provocateurs in Russia. So uh, Russian people they have to live in some conspiracy world. Uh, with some FSB agents, with recruitments, with some uh, informational operations. And um, of course, for them, it's natural to believe in conspiracy theories because they often judge by themselves. But in the West, um, Russia uses uh, this uh, uh, classic Western skeptical attitude toward government. Sometimes it's good, because it sometimes prevents uh, to create a totalitarian state, to create a dictatorship. People should have critical thinking toward government. But Russia, of course, used these elements. And of course, if we are talking about Western uh, countries, it's not a dictatorship. It's just impossible to create some kind of deep state or government behind the scene, because it's a lot of institutions and they have their own interest. It's just no one center which make decisions. So it's just impossible. We know by American reality that when government tries to do something illegal, we all always find some whistleblower who reveals all details of this act. So, of course, here this conspiracy series just doesn't work on practice because it's, it's very hard to conceal something with many institutions and a uh, system of check and balances. Sometimes it doesn't um, work well enough, but at least it works on the level that we know some information, we can learn the truth. So, of course, um, uh, as uh, Yuri Filchinsky mentioned, probably not sooner but later, anyway, it's possible, um, with free press, with whistleblowers, with many institutions. So, um, even if they don't work properly for now. So, of course, uh, when Western people believe in conspiracy theories, it's just they, I think they don't have something to compare with. Uh, they didn't live in Russia. If they want to see a repressive government controlled by special services, they should go to Russia. <laughs> and then they, they could compare. But they don't have such opportunities. So, of course, they think that the United States is the worst situation in the world and other countries are free and it's some kind of alternative opinion provided by RT and the Russian propaganda outlets. So, it, it's a very, uh, very difficult situation for Western people because sometimes they should believe in conspiracy theories when we're talking about Russia. Because in Russian activities, some conspiracy re conspiracies really take place. It's a fact, it's even a fact proven by um, uh, legal investigation.
and by courts sometimes. Uh, but uh, they could be carefully because it's a um, huge temptation to start to believe in all conspiracy theories. And uh, this means to um, turn responsibility from themselves to other uh, enemy, into, uh, external enemy or deep state or world government or something like that. So it's, it's also different. It's also not so simple. Interesting. That, that's a very interesting take because... You know, that now the way you explain it, uh, Russians have been raised on conspiracy theories that could very well be true. And so they have a much easier time accepting any conspiracy theories. Mm-hmm. And, and Americans who are skeptical towards government, that's a healthy skepticism, um, mm-hmm. are actually sometimes getting fooled by what is a conspiracy and what is interesting. Um, interesting. Ksenia, I think to, to complete this conversation, mm-hmm. there should be some solutions. Um, you live in the United States, but you have lived in Russia, so I think you're perfectly qualified to offer some uh, possible solutions to how we can go forward and how we can deal with this both on individual level and on institutional level. You know, it's unfortunately no one, I think, now has uh, the whole solution because, it's, uh, because so many think tanks are working on this problem, how to deal with the Russian propaganda. I can um, suggest partly solution, not uh, uh, to refuge the whole Russian propaganda, but at least this part with ideologies for export. Uh, as we talked before, these ideologies include uh, some pleasant worldview for a specific group of people, some image of enemy and phobias generated by this image. But at the same time, uh, they include some new point, some uh, ties and connections of some current phenomenon uh, what Kremlin dislikes and wants to discredit. And this enemies and phobias. I'll try to give an example. For example, uh, about uh, Mueller investigation. Uh, You know that uh, old American people who remember the Cold War, uh, they're afraid of communism in uh, every uh, form. So, um, uh, radical right propagandist uh, in the in union with uh, Russian propagandists, tried to represent Mueller investigation as a kind of communist collusion against the United States. So they uh, built a false logical chain that uh, it was started by Trump's political op- opponents. Trump's political opponents are communist and even Stalinists. So that means that all this investigation is deep state communist collusion. So we uh, think some false conclusions. First of all, not all um, this investigation wasn't started by only by Democrats. For example, Comey and Mueller were registered Republicans. And uh, it's even not about uh, political view. And many American security experts don't have any political preferences, but they were critical about Trump's policy. We know that now when uh, Trump withdrew American troops from Syria, uh, even his fellow Republicans criticize him. So uh, it's not only a political issue. Sometimes it's just a security issue. Uh, Second point, uh, Democrats it's, are also very different, including a lot of people with moderate views. Yes, some uh, part of Democrat, Democratic Party are socialist, but even they are not a communist. And uh, people, for example, they uh, use a fact that one a person mentioned in still this years um, a report about Stalin, but it was an analytical report which included information about Stalin's repression. And uh, this person didn't justify Stalin's repression, but they 
um, wrote that if she wrote about Stalin, she is a Stalinist, and <laughs> so all uh, all uh, people who are anti Trump are Stalinist is simply not true. So and don't forget about Evan McMullen, it's alternative conservative movement. Also, don't support Trump and many never Trump Republicans. Former Republicans. So uh, we see that this connection is complete lie. So we can we cannot refuse. Uh, we we cannot um, change the views, uh, the political views. But at least we can refute these links. Because if we just simply try to refute Russian disinformation, all kinds of disinformation, it doesn't work. Because people want to believe in these ideologies, for expert. And we cannot influence on the basic views. It's another question to psychologists and uh, many other people how to work with radical people, how to help them to change their views. Uh, I mean, nationalism, even Nazis elements. It's another hard work and I don't have a solution here. But at least we can... Uh, um, fight against this weak point, this connection between an image of enemy and some current processes which I call object of discredit, what Kremlin wants to discredit. Uh, for example, as we already mentioned about League of the South, we cannot change the views, but at least we can show them connections between real Russia uh, All right. the ideology, so to split the alliance with Xenia. Russia. That's, it's some solutions uh. that could work. Would, I guess to summarize this, do you feel that what Russia is engaged in right now, would you consider it an act of war? Yes, yes. Uh, by the way, I closely follow Russian propaganda now because I know language. I can find on the internet Russian stock shows, some Russian political articles on the propaganda sites. And for example, just um, probably months, a couple of months ago, a Russian security chief, uh, Patrushev, Nikolai Patrushev, said that the United States is a threat to the whole world order. So, of course, they, even some high-level Russian officials mentioned about the hostile attitude towards the United States. And, of course, we can see that Russian trolls still walk and Russian propaganda still walk. And we ex accept they will come back on the uh, United States' new presidential election. And, um, of course, they tried to increase all contradictions in the Western society, on all, all fears, and they try to connect uh, things they want to discredit with people views. And um, it works, unfortunately it works. It works because it's uh, flattering to people views. Um, because for, for, for all kinds of people, it's very important to, uh, to say, look, I was right. It's definitely confirmed what I thought. That's, that, that's what they use. They make people to believe and they want to believe. But, you know, uh, just a small example that we shouldn't trust Russia. One American citizen, also Canadian and British citizen, Paul Whelan, I think American uh, people know this name because it appeared frequently in the news. He was detained by in, in Russia by the FSB, arrested and accused in espionage. Just uh, recently I received a mail from his brother, David Whelan, when he uh, confessed that his brother for 10 years had a friend, as he said, uh, an active duty FSB officer. And Paul Whelan uh, frequently visited him in Russia, even attended his home. And he knew, he perfectly knew that, Paul, uh, that his friend Ilya worked for the FSB because in his uh, letter to his brother from Russia, um, Two years ago, he wrote, even he named an FSB school, which uh, his friend graduated. 
So he knew about his job, but anyway, he considered him as a friend. He uh, called him Tavarishi, it's comrades in Russian. Um, and now David Willen claims that it was Ilya who framed his brother, who had the map. And um, uh, I'm sure it's true. So it's very uh, Paul Willen loved Russia. He in his page in Russian social. Uh, you know, but but this really just goes back to your bigger point, which is Russian approach to news, and um, it's 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 driven by agenda. So in this case, a, a man is arrested because it suits Russian agenda, because the agenda is we got to have somebody so we could exchange him or, you know, for whatever for political... Putin, Russia, probably. Who knows? The, the key is is that, um, you know, as, as they say in Russia, it's important to find a person. The crime will find. <laughs> so I, I think this is just a fundamental approach as far as whether evaluating news and value of, and, in, you know, how much we can trust news that has anything to do with Russia. Um, we just have to and keep in mind that this is agenda-driven uh, product. It's impossible to trust uh, to special services, I guess, in every country, especially in Russia. It was very That's nice. right. And if you have an opportunity to speak with secrets, yeah, don't. Okay, don't. Don't. Don't just, agree. Just don't. Never. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Senia, thank you so much for this conversation and for, for all your work. I think it's uh, it's very important. And uh, uh, if you're listening and you're watching Rashkin Report, uh, thank you. My name is Yuri Rashkin, and my guest today was Ksenia Kirillova, an independent journalist from Russia who currently resides in the United States. Ksenia, how can people um, read your materials, follow you? Is Facebook just the best way, or what do you recommend? Um. In Facebook, yes, but uh, in Facebook, the most of my uh, publications um, uh, they are visible because you're, you're to published course, all over the place, but, but then you put the links Twitter. on your page. Yes, you can follow me on Twitter. On Twitter, I'll always publish, uh, and in English. Uh, mostly my publications in English, and uh, if you want to read me in Russian, uh, you can find my name on Russian Ukrainian service of Radio Liberty. It's a lot of materials, in, uh, including on Kasparov site. If you want to find my publications in English, it's better to follow me on Twitter. Ksenia. I always try to publish everything there. Thank you so much. You've and been you. watching and listening Rashkin Report. Take care. <laughs>